What is going on, guys? Your boy Joe Shake72 coming to you guys with it right now. It's a late night tonight. If you're watching this tomorrow, the next day, whatever it is, um, I just want to talk about just I want to talk about this team. I want to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to talk about this draft in general and what to really expect from this draft. Okay, I've already kind of gone over some things about it, um, but this is just do or die with this draft. It is. I mean, there are so many good prospects in this draft. There are positions that go pretty deep within the third or fourth round of this draft. The Eagles have, you know, 11 picks in this draft, which the Eagles haven't had this many picks in a while. I mean, we haven't even traded Zach Ertz yet, and yet we could have 12 to 13 picks in this draft, depending on what we get before the draft for Zach Ertz. Okay, because obviously the Eagles aren't keeping him. But... You know, moving back from six, you know, wasn't my favorite thing, but I understand why they did it. And a lot of people on TV that I watch, they say that the Miami Dolphins lost this trade. Um, you know, the Eagles wanted to move back with a certain team. And obviously the, you know, Miami Dolphins had to, um, you know, the San Francisco trade had to go down before obviously this would happen. Um, so Miami didn't get as much as they thought they were going to get. Um, and the Eagles sort of won this trade in a lot of ways, and I understand why they did it. You know, uh, there's a lot of smoke screens going on. I mean, I don't know what to believe anymore, guys, because, you know, Carson Wentz gets traded. Then we hear news from Jeffrey Lurie that the Eagles are building around Jalen Hurts. And then all of a sudden, they're trying to trade up to the third overall pick for Zach Wilson. So I don't know what the case is. Was it really for Zach Wilson? Was it for, uh, uh, you know, uh, a receiver or uh, Jamar Chase or I don't know at this point. I really don't. But moving back from six to go to 12, you get a first round pick and you could potentially have three first round picks for 2022. If Carson Wentz plays 75% of his snaps for the Colts, which I think he will, unless he doesn't get injured, obviously, but I don't think the Colts are going to really bench him and really put him in the same spot where he was in Philadelphia. Cause that's just going to be a repeat. Um, but that's his problem, obviously. So I don't really care about that. But three first-round picks could be coming our way, or two firsts and two seconds could be coming our way. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So you move back, you get a first-round pick. It's not like we move back to the 19th overall pick, guys. Not even like we move back to the 21st overall pick. If that was the case, yeah, that would be horrible. You lose out on a lot of players by those picks, Okay. But there's still a lot of depth to this picks. Now, what I'm understanding from what I've been seeing is that the Eagles are more interested in the guys that aren't going to be drafted top 10, top 15. So they're interested in getting, you know, receivers within the second round or late first. If they can move back into the first with the rest of their picks, you know, make the pick at 12, grab the rest of your picks, move back into the first round. That would make a lot of sense. You know, you got a lot of guys here. Kadarius, Tony, and Terrace, uh, 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 Jeremiah, Wusu, uh, Karanoa, Terrace Marshall Jr. I mean, you have so many guys here. I mean, that you can get if you don't get a Jamar Chase or a Kyle Pitts, which obviously every team wants. You know, understand? Like, you, you know, they go defense. I mean, what I really expect them to do is they could go defense the first round. It actually could happen, guys. They could go get a siege, a JC Horn. They could get a Patrick Sertain if he's not, you know, uh, you know, grabbed by the Cowboys. You know, there's a lot of good players in this draft. You know, you could get Asante Samuel Jr. in the second round, you know, if he fits the scheme for the Eagles on defense. So there's a lot going on here. I mean, would they go after a Najee Harris? Um, you know, there's a lot of questions. I mean, there's a lot of questions with this team right now. I think most of all, the Eagles want to get as many weapons around Jalen Hurts as possible. I think that's what they want to do. And from meeting some of these late first round talents like Terrace Marshall and Kadarius Tony and, and some of these other guys that have a lot of high ceiling, you know, you could get your star that way as well. But it's is it promising? No, but the draft is a lottery. I mean, that's what it is. The draft is a lottery. The draft is a gamble. And, you know, pro days only get you so far, but it depends if the player is drafted to a team and if he works out in that system, if he works for a if he gets drafted to a team that's a total mess, that has bad coaching, 
I really don't want that to happen. I think this coaching staff was a huge upgrade for 2021. I think it was the right call to get rid of Doug Peterson. Obviously, you know, Howie Roseman is still here, which, you know, this is his last year on his contract, by the way. So this draft is make it or break it for his job. I mean, a lot of people say that, you know, how he's, you know, uh, you know, whoever else is going to be the scapegoat. Jalen Hurts is going to be the scapegoat. Nick Sirianni is going to be the scapegoat. Now, I'm not saying that every coaching, every coaching hire is going to be perfect, but I think they ended up getting a really good coaching staff. I, I really do. I mean, you pretty much took the Colts coaching staff between the pass game court, you know, the passing coordinator. Nick Sariani was Frank Reich's right hand man. And, you know, Shane Steck in the way he's worked with, you know, Justin Herbert and the Chargers and, and kind of turn him around a little bit and how he's worked with quarterbacks. He's been a receivers coach. So uh, there's a lot of familiarity with, with these coaches and how they know each other. Okay, defensively with Jonathan Gannon from a DB coach that did very well. Now as a defensive coordinator, he's going to bring a lot of excitement to this defense. So what am I looking at right now? I'm looking at a team that is dying for those building blocks pieces we need for 2021 it might not be a division win it might not be a contention for getting in the playoffs but what you can look at for the eagles in 2021 is a team that's looking for those building block players for the future you build you see what you get in a year of this season you build off that Obviously, the Eagles will be in a better, way better cap situation next year than they were this year. Definitely. They're not, they're, they, will, they will not be $70 million over the cap, okay? Obviously, hard decisions will have to get be made next year with our defensive line and what's going on with that. So, there's a lot going on, okay? You know, uh, offensive line-wise, you have a good offensive line. You know, if they stay healthy, and that's, you know, 14 changes at the offensive line is ridiculous. Thank God, Je thank God Stoutland is still here with us. He could have took that job at Alabama he didn't he stayed with the Eagles obviously someone beat him to the job but he's here and he's with us and I think he's, he's the best offensive line coach in, in the whole entire league okay Jack Driscoll Nate Herbig Jordan Mulata will hopefully finally get his left tackle start okay he's 6'8 350 pounds I mean you're not going to find that size anywhere Okay, you go to the running backs. I like the Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Jordan Howard, Elijah Holyfield. I like some of these guys. I really do. Um, you know, I don't know how they're going to use running backs. I don't know how they're going to they going to use a bruiser and two running backs. I don't know what they're doing. I really don't. If it was me, I'd keep three running backs. Definitely. A three-headed monster with Scott, Sanders, Jordan Howard for this year. I would love it. I think you'd do plenty of different things with this offense. Plus with Jalen Hurts and his read option and, and working with the running back, you know, and, and obviously, you know, being that dual threat type guy. And then you have Miles Sanders in there as well. That's, you know, people got to look out for him and what he could do. I think he's a future pro bowler for this team. I think, you know, I hopefully, you know, Miles Sanders will be a little bit more healthy and, you know, do some good things. Obviously he could have had a thousand yards last year, but the Eagles didn't do Carson Wentz any favors by not running the ball either. Half of these games, sometimes not even five snaps a game. Okay, obviously when Jalen Hurts was in, a lot more read option, a lot more, you know, with the quarterback and, and, you know, with the running back. So there's a lot more going on there. And then you go to the defensive line. A lot of old players. Why is Derek Barnett getting paid $10 million? I have no idea. Javon Hargrave, you better show up this year. Otherwise, I'm going to be really upset to pay him four years, $39 million. Fletcher Cox, I was hoping he was going to take another restructure or some type of pay cut. He's a $23 million cap hit. He's not Aaron Donald. I understand that. He's not. So when people, when I say, well, Aaron, well, Fletcher Cox should probably take a restructure or pay cut. Why? He's a monster defensive tackle. Yeah, against the run, he's great. Against the pass, eh, it's been dipping a little bit. He's not Aaron Donald throwing people around. Okay, let's get that straight. Um, and then with the cornerback position, the whole secondary, you could say. I mean, at corners with Darius Slay, he's got two years left on his contract through 2022, and that's it. I mean, you know, you have Darius Slay. You, you you hopefully draft another guy this year, get some more competition. Avante Max cannot play outside, move him to the slot, or move him to the inside, obviously. Um Linebackers, they should draft one this year. They should draft a very good one this year. Nathan Gary is gone, thank God. Okay, Sean Bradley, TJ Edwards, the, the I mean – Davion Taylor, a third-round pick from last year. Thanks to Jim Schwartz, none of these guys got a lot of playing time because our offseason was the same as everyone else's offseason, and we didn't take advantage of it. We didn't take advantage of some, uh, you know, some scrimmages at the link. We just didn't take advantages of, of the situation, period, of what was really going on. 
Okay, so I'm hoping to draft another linebacker this year and a lot of competition. I don't think we have a good coverage linebacker yet. I think everyone's good at, you know, tackling, you know, being physical and all that stuff. But if you can't cover, which there's a lot of sub packages with these sub packages with these defenses now, it's really hard to find that coverage linebacker. You know, after losing Jordan Hicks, we kind of been looking for that guy and haven't found him yet. And then you go to the safety position. Kavon Wallace needs to start, stop talking and start playing. And I think this is a good year for him to really, you know, go in with this defense and, and hopefully be that, that safety that we've all wanted. Okay. He's talked a lot on Twitter. He always talks. I can't stand that, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, you sign that other, that other safety Adams from uh, the, the Buccaneers, more of a special teams guy, but he has started games for the Buccaneers as a safety as well. So you have a veteran, a uh, backup veteran safety on top of having Rodney McLeod come back uh, and then sign that one year deal for Anthony Harris, which was a total steal. Um, and I, I think, you know, if he plays well this year, I would extend him. I mean, I know he's going to be 30 or he is 30 right now. I mean, he's a, a veteran safeties could play for a good amount of years. And the lucky ones do play longer. So you could have him been there a lot longer, you know, if you've given him another two-year deal or something to kind of, you know, separate, you know, kind of put him there and, and see what happens um, if that's the case. Rodney McLeod is probably going to be his last year in Philadelphia, most likely, you know, depending. He played very good last year. Obviously, the ACL injury last year and – you know, after, you know, I'm not a big Rodney McLeod fan. I wasn't a big fan of him when we drafted him. Um, but I think he's, you know, last year he played very well, but on a really bad defense, a really bad Eagles team most of the weeks that we played. Okay. And then really, you know, coming to that wide receiver position is, you know, I think we have a very underrated wide receiver position. I think it's just we haven't seen too much Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson has blocked all these young guys from st stunting their growth and their development. I mean, that's what these coaches were doing. Like it was only a matter of time till Jason Peters took Jordan Mulata's place. It was only a matter of time before Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey came back to take snaps away from Travis Fulgham, John Hightower, Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins wasn't even getting playing time period until that Cardinals game when he had that 32, 33 yard touchdown on that wide receiver screen. Okay. So there's, you know, I think our even receiver core is very underrated and, and, you know, I think there's so much ceiling to cover that we haven't covered yet because we don't have the right coaches to get the best out of these players. And I think that's the huge problem that we have right now i think that's the major issue okay so there's a you know i i really do like have a lot of optimism for this team i i, I i'm very optimistic for this team i, I really am I, even with howie roseman in control what he's doing you know i don't know if jalen hurts was the right pick i i a four game sample size it is what it is okay and just give the guy a shot. If he stinks this year, he stinks. And that's it. And we move on. I just want to know because I don't want to get rid of Hurts or don't start him. And then it's always that that thing in your brain. It's like, what if? What if he started all year? What if he started all year in 2021? You know, you never know what you get out of these guys. And that's why you got to give these guys a shot. Give your quarterback a shot. I don't care about Joe Flacco. I could care less. I said this to myself. Smoke screens for, for trying to draft Zach Wilson at third overall. But you sign Flacco to a, 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 a one-year deal, three point, well, a little over $3 million, $7 million in incentives, and then, go, and then you have Jalen Hurts that's going to get his shot. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, they're going to go after a quarterback. Like, they're not going to let go of Flacco for that contract he just got. I know it's not big, but plus $7 million in incentives if he gets those incentives. And then, obviously, a cheap, a cheap you know, uh, rookie contract still with Jalen Hurts. And you're going to draft Zach Wilson and pay him a lot of money? It just makes no sense. Um, that's why I think this quarterback thing was a smokescreen. Um, and that's uh, they want teams to find, say that the Eagles are going to go get a Mac Jones at 12 or something like that. And that's what I'm hoping for. I mean, this just makes no sense to me at all. It really doesn't. It hasn't at all. Okay. Jalen Hurts needs a shot. Let him take the leadership role. He's been acting like a leader. He's been training his butt off. He's been working out with the receivers. He's going to be working out with more receivers. He's going to get these guys prepared. Work on that chemistry in the offseason. Okay, I'm done with Carson Wentz. He is gone. Now it's a new era now. Like, I'm all up for whoever's quarterback for Philadelphia Eagles. I will I will support that quarterback, who, regardless of who it is. I've seen people make videos and rants about the Philadelphia Eagles, why they're mad, screaming, yelling, you know, getting mad at this team. Like, look, I'm going to probably dislike a lot of things that happened this season, or I might not. It might be as 
you know, just because, you know, I know people are feeling down because the Giants signed a whole bunch of free agents. Okay, I, I understand that. And, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? They want to win now, and that's what they want to do. Um, you know, the Eagles did that in 17, and it worked out perfectly because every free agent that Howie Roseman brought in produced. Every single signing that he brought in produced. And it was a very good season, and that's what – this could turn into, but the Eagles need to be smarter. They can't wait till, you know, they can't just keep getting, you know, if they end up getting a lot of money for free. And the thing is, these contracts for, for the Super Bowl weren't even, weren't even that big at the time. So I'm not trying to go off topic, but you know what I mean? You have to build through the draft, period. Like free agency, it's a stepping stone. It's a lot of money and things might not work out. You know what I mean? Like then, you know, you keep extending contracts. You keep that. The problem is we keep restructuring these old players and we're not drafting right. We're not, we have no money for free agency. So it's going to catch up to you and it's going to bite you. And that's what it did this year. Like free agency was so horrible this year. I mean, it was so bad. I didn't expect anything to happen, but I was surprised on Anthony Harris. I think they made quiet strategic moves. Okay, it was. I was really happy they didn't bring back Jalen Mills. I could see this team is definitely changing. I mean, I could definitely see a youth movement coming into this team, and I like it a lot. Okay, I do like it a lot. So um, that's really all I gotta say, guys. I'm I'm really excited about this season, and and then this draft. I mean, it could be almost anybody at this point. I don't know. All I know is they're not drafting a quarterback with the 12th overall. But between the players that they are meeting, I know like meeting players is like doesn't mean they're gonna draft them. I understand that, but I mean at least I know that they're 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 talking to players. Those names that I'm hearing like you know Terrence Marshall and 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 Kadarius Tony at receiver. Like at least I'm seeing names that could be real good, solid, productive players coming to the Philadelphia Eagles. So I mean, very excited for that, and can't wait till a few weeks. So should be exciting. Um, other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I am going to, I didn't tell anybody this yet, but there will be a huge update for this channel before the draft happens. Um, you will find out sooner or later. It's a big surprise. I am very happy to announce what's going to happen and not now, I'm not doing it right now, but, um, there's going to be a big update and a lot of cool things are going to happen and something more fun. And I can't wait to do it. So, um, I can't wait to let you guys know when it does happen. Um, and I will see you guys later, guys. If you guys haven't liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe. The support has been unreal. You guys have been fantastic and thank God we could go through this together and do some good things. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys later. Shakes what up, fly, fly. Peace out, guys. Peace.